Are you ready? Yeah. Yay! Okay, hi everybody. Um, my name is Joya Gibbons. I'm one of the health educators here with the HMR program. Um, this is my boss, Chuck. He is one of the health educators and he's the director of the program as well. He is, he himself is a loser and he knows it. He's a hundred pound loser and keeping it off for 11 years. Woo, woo, woo. Woo. And um, a lot of our other staff members are here. Christina is filming and Lydia is back. Um, she's gonna help me collect those little sheets of paper. Brenda's back there in the corner trying to hide, but I just called her out. Um, okay, so. Thank you for coming on this yucky rainy day. This is gonna be a first in a series. The next panel discussion will be on January 19th and the um, panelists will be announced at a later date. Um, if you are not familiar with this facility, the bathrooms are right across the hall. Um, there will be an intro session immediately following this group discussion panel at 11.30. So if you are not already in the program and want to stay and learn more about it, that would be a great opportunity to do so. You all got a slip of paper, I hope, that you filled out. Um, on the back of that slip, feel free to write any questions that you have for the panelists. And um, we will collect those slips of paper and hand them to Chuck, who will call them out. I want you all to give a big round of applause to these guys. Woo! Yay! So um, they're going to tell you guys a brief story about themselves in just a minute. But first, I want to tell you that Skinny Dave is stuck in traffic. When he gets here, this group will have 650 pounds of weight loss. Woo! 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 I also want to tell you, I'm almost done, by the way, that um, we will be streaming this on Facebook Live. Um, there are the pages that this will be on if you want to share it with anybody. I'm, be nice about it. Don't say, hey, I think you need to know about this and, and share it with them. But, um, and then I want you to know that when your name is in the bowl, when you filled out that little slip of paper, we will have two drawings. Um, one for a canister of chocolate shake and one for a canister of vanilla shake. However, you can, of course, ask for a different flavor. Okay, so I am going to start off by um, once again thanking all of these guys. Shane, Sharon, Olivia, Ken, and Julie. Dave will be here, hopefully. And I'm going to pass the mic right now to um, Shane to start, just because he's closest to me, um, to briefly tell us why you're here, how much weight have you lost? How long have you been here? Any other something, something you feel like telling us? And then hopefully you guys will have a lot of questions. If not, I'll pass the mic back to these fine people so they can tell you the rest of the story. Okay, here you go. Thank you, Joy. I'm gonna stand up so I can see everybody. Uh, first of all, thank you all for coming out this morning to listen to us ramble for the next four or five hours about how passionate we are five. about this program. Okay? No, seriously, we could, honestly. I mean, the folks up here and several of the folks out in the audience have a genuine love for this program because of what it's done for us. So again, as you can see, my name is Shane Benoit. Um, I started this program May of 2017. And i um, happy to say I'm down 161 pounds. So, you know, saying that out loud, you have mixed feelings, you know. There's a little bit of an embarrassment that comes along with that being at that point where I had to lose 161 pounds. But this program was the easiest program that I had ever done. I, I don't even like to call it a diet anymore. So I'm not going to take up very much time on that subject, but just as a quick introduction, that's who I am. Um, I, I'm proud to be chosen for this panel, and I'm proud to be sitting next to these good folks. So I hope there's some good questions later. I'll be around even after the meeting, uh, so feel free to approach me and talk to me. I, I'm not shy about the program at all. I'm very passionate about it, very driven about it. So um, 
as well as these good folks. So I'm going to pass the mic to Sharon, let her introduce herself, and then we'll keep going with it. <laughs> I'm vertically challenged, as you all can see. Um, Joya asked me this morning if I was nervous, and my response was, no, I'm emotional. So bear with me, because I'm Irish, and I get very emotional, and I am passionate about HMR. I joined the program on April 7th, 2014, and I, every single year I tell them, that's my new birthday, that's my healthy birthday, April 7th, 2014. And I lost 70 pounds, and I lost that 70 pounds by December the 29th, 2015. So this December, I celebrate four years of maintaining, and I have never maintained a weight loss in my life. I've done every program under the sun. And um, what brought me here is I work at Baptist Health, and we were sitting in our office one day, myself and a coworker, and my weight had gotten so out of control that the number was overwhelming. It's, it's almost like I can't even go on a diet now because now I can never lose what I need to lose. Um, I'm four foot nine and I was a half a pound shy of 200 pounds. And um, so I was as wide as I am tall. <laughs> but um, I remember saying, oh boy, if I could be like Oprah too, if somebody would tell me what to eat and give me, have a gym and have me a trainer and blah, 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 blah. And about two weeks later, we got an email through our wellness program at Baptist offering us a discount as Baptist employees if we wanted to do the HMR program here. And it included 13 weeks membership at Milestone, it included a trainer and these fine folks in the HMR program. So I decided I better put my heart where my mouth had been the few weeks before and I've never been happy. And I say all the time, it's not life changing. It is, but it's really life saving. I don't know where I would be right now if I hadn't taken the journey I took for the last five years. So I am forever, ever grateful. And like I said, I'm sorry if I get emotional, but <laughs> and I'm, I'm also passionate. And if anybody wants a text number, a phone number, anything, any time of the day, Facebook message me. I will talk to you about the program. I will tell you what I think helps and doesn't help and how to get through those snafus because it is a roller coaster and you need all the guidance you can get. That's why it's so important to come and stay. Stay the course, phase one, phase two, phase two, phase two, phase two, because that's how you really learn how to make a lifestyle change. So I won't go into any further, but I'll answer questions. Hi, my name is Olivia Nally, and I am down 49 and a half pounds. Um, <laughs> I have been in the program for about eight months, and um, I entered the program because I went to my primary care physician, and I said, what can you write me to get this <laughs> weight off? And she was like, really? I was like, yeah. She was like, tell me a little bit about how this weight came on. And so I described it. She's like, well, it doesn't seem like it's thyroid thing it seems like it's just the things that you've been doing I was like yeah she's like okay let me write you something I was like okay good and so she wrote it and she handed it to me and it said HMR <laughs> Baptist, Baptist East Milestone and I went directly after that appointment and signed up and it was obviously the best thing I've ever done it was um, really helped me to um, rid myself of some uh, trigger foods, some addictions associated with those trigger foods, and just really give me a reset that I needed. Um, and um, now that I've been in phase two for a few months, it's just, it's been great to kind of get back to where I was a while ago. Um, and um, it's been a, just an awesome process. Well, I feel like we're all uh, HMR disciples and we could take 30 minutes to tell our story, or an hour, so we, we're so passionate about talking about the program. But uh, the journey started for me in 2002. My doctor said, you're going on blood pressure medicine, or you could go check out the HMR program at Baptist East Milestone. So I wound up here in 2002. Uh, I can't remember exactly how long I stayed in phase one, but it seemed like it was a year or so. But uh, at any rate, I got my weight down. I was also introduced to a Don't Set Get Fit, which is trainers that provide a program. And that has really been a wonderful thing for me because we meet a couple times a week, work out the trainer. And also, uh, 
I would say that there are blitz programs that are offered a couple of times a year or three times a year, and I've been able to come back to those if I want to do a little fine tuning. It's a four week program in which you get back into the basics, you get your mind straight, you get refocused, and you stay on. So 16 years, I've been able to keep my weight off and I've become a real exercise junkie. Mm -hmm. Woo! Woo! My name is Julie Carroll, and I've lost 103 pounds. I feel like a completely different person than I did. I started my journey in 2017, April 2017, and there's no comparison how I feel, how I sleep, how people perceive you now. That's a huge thing that I don't know if some of the females have noticed. I get doors open for me now than I didn't have that before, which is kind of interesting, I think. Um, but one thing about me, I have I told Joy this morning, I probably have traveled over 10,000 miles attending class. Wow. I drive 80 miles, well, 160 miles round trip every time I attend this meeting. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that's how passionate and how I feel about this. So to drive 160 miles every time I attend this, I think every mile is a day to my health, a day yeah. I can live longer. Okay. That's great. All right. And I think this must be Skinny Dave. <laughs> Skinny Dave. <laughs> My turn already? Perfect timing. It's me. I'll rein in from the rain. It's good PA. Actually, I just limped a little bit. My name is Dave, <laughs> a.k.a. Skinny Dave. I've been in the program. I've been in the program for nine months, two weeks. I've lost over 200 pounds. Wow. <laughs> been maintaining for the last three weeks, getting ready to move into phase two, kind of. <laughs> uh, let's see, uh, was last week I was legally and permanently released from my diabetic doctor. Wow. So I'm nice and, and I'm a, I have a pacemaker and all that stuff, so I went from 15 medications to two. Wow. Woo. Yeah. Well, very good. Uh, going forward, I'm going to ask you to just stay seated for your when, when your questions are asked. Uh, first question I'm going to ask is, uh, what surprised you the most? Who wants to go first? Okay. So what? What surprised me the most about HMR was they encouraged you to eat. Yeah. The diet oh, yeah. program. What was that about? <laughs> if you're hungry, eat something. But eat the right foods. Okay, we have terms and terminology that we use in the HMR program, like in the box and, and, and different things like that. That just means sticking within the program guidelines. I can eat more food. I was on a diet, and I could eat more food. That resonated with me, and I was like, okay, I'm not going to be hungry. That was one of the biggest pitfalls to other diet programs that I had tried, was being hungry. And then the second thing that they taught us early on was always be prepared. Always be prepared with something, fruit, a bar, some kind of healthy snack that you can grab at a moment's notice, and eat it because you're hungry. You know, it keeps you out of a drive through it keeps you out of other sticky situations, grabbing for a bag of chips at 3 o'clock in the afternoon at work. Always be prepared. Those two things were, uh, it just, it hit me like a brick, okay? I could eat and always be prepared. Always have something around to eat that was healthy for you. So, that was my big surprise. Anybody else have a surprise? Well, I think my biggest one initially was, um, how easy phase one was. You know, when they said you're gonna eat this food for, and, and the, the goal with a program when I joined with Baptist was, we would be in phase one on thir for 13 weeks, then you would phase into phase two. And I thought, oh my gosh, I've gotta eat, they were little blue boxes then, so we called them little blue boxes. We gotta eat little blue boxes. And so, you know, my, my first day, 
I came to an evening meeting and of course I had my last supper, you know you do. And so <laughs> I got asked, one of our health educator one day said, I bet you all can't even remember the last time you had McDonald's. I said, I can, April 7th, 2014 at 1230. Because I had a big, I had the big back, the large supersized fry because it was my last supper before I came that night at 530. But at any rate, I think that phase one was really easy. It's so structured. And um, the other thing that just shocked me was nobody gave me a goal weight. When I walked into Weight Watchers the very first time, according to your height, you know, they tell you what you should weigh. Well, I'd have to cut off half my body because my height, I'm supposed to be like 80 pounds or something. But right immediately they said, this is what you need to get to. So every class was focused on, well, do you weigh this yet? Or, well, you're this far from this goal. Nobody gave me a goal when I walked in here. We just, it was just stay the course, stay, on, stay in the box, eat what you're supposed to do, and we weighed every time. And I think I went, I think I got told that one time I had a record, I think I went like 36 weeks maybe or something before I didn't lose something, whether it was even a half a pound. And I think it was like 38th week before I gained a half a pound, and Chuck can tell you I was in tears because I thought, oh my God, I've gained a half a pound. And it's just what your body does. But anyway, I think the, the thing that shocked me when I started was how easy phase one was, and I wouldn't have cared if I ever went into phase two because it was working and I was scared not to, but now I'm so glad. I've not missed a class. I still come to class, and it's been, it'll be five years in April. I'm afraid not to, but it's a roller coaster, and it's a lifelong journey, and I have never used the D word, diet, at all. I always say I'm in a wellness program. Mm -hmm. So, and it is. It's a wellness program journey with no destination. You just keep going. <laughs> uh -huh. um, what surprised me was that there was um, really no opportunity to, opportunity to game the program. Um, you really couldn't cheat at it um, like you could with some other programs I was seeing out there. You could, you know, bank some days or do something weird here. And so it didn't allow for those um, moments of, um, of, where you kind of just let your guard down and say, oh, I'm gonna do better this day if I, if I don't do good this day. And, and it was so evenly consistent that it just kind of wiped all of that pressure away. There was so low pressure as it related to me and what I needed to do. And that's what I thought was the beauty of the program. I guess the biggest surprise for me, uh, when you think about dieting, the world thinks about, I'm going to eat food I don't like for a specific amount of time, and when I get to my targeted date, then I'm gonna go back eating the food that got me here in the first place. Mm -hmm. That's the general world's, uh, and I guess yeah. the big surprise for me has been how much I love this food. <laughs> I, I continue to eat the boxes most of the time. I take my lunch to work and have for, for 25, 30 years. And, and most of the time, I'm taking a box with me. And so my wife and I actually stopped by here Sunday afternoon and eat in the cafeteria where you can get each you can get, I call it HMR vegetable soup and an entree. And so I, I, the surprise for me has been that after all these years, I still enjoy the food. Good. My surprise might be a little bit different. We attend phase one meetings and all these people talk. I love the shakes. The shakes are my favorite thing. The shakes are wonderful. We went through four or five meetings and people kept talking about, I love these shakes. And I finally said one day, I do not love the shakes. <laughs> and But I know the shakes work. So that's why I continue with them. I would try chocolate, I tried everything, and I would still drink them because I knew how important it was for the shakes. Even though I didn't care for them, I knew they worked. So that was, so if you're in a meeting, phase one, and people talk about, oh, these shakes are, it is your preference, but it wasn't my preference. So just don't, if you don't like them, drink them anyway, because it's very, very important. <laughs> I guess what surprised me the most about the program is the amount of weight that I lost by keeping my nose down and working the program that was working me. Uh, I've never been out of the box, and that's my key. Woo! My box is a little bit different now, but, uh, you know, I can honestly tell you I don't ever remember being in the 300s. I went from the 400s to the 200s and don't even remember it. I don't, weigh, I don't remember weighing in. I don't remember those meals. This is just what I do. 
-hmm. You know, so in my first weigh-in was nine days, 24 pounds. Wow. wow. We stay in the box. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Right. So, uh, wow, amazing answers. Um, what was your greatest revelation or aha moment during the journey? Aha moments. I'll share. I'll share one of mine just to get you get you get your mind going. Was when I saw my reflection in a window one day. I went, you know, I was like, wow. So um, that was that was an aha moment for me. I guess my first aha moment is when I went shopping for the first time. I'd given all of my old clothes away. Everything. I mean, I have no clothes at this time, and I go, <laughs> I go, I go to the store, and I'm picking up clothes, and my wife is going, mm -mm. and I'm like, this, I like this, and she's like, no, 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 and I don't realize I went from a 58 waist to a 38 waist. Wow. So I'm looking at clothes that, in my eyes, this is how big I still am, but I'm yeah. not. I'm not. I can actually go shop off the rack for the first time and. 25 years. Wow. But uh, that was my aha moment. It's just being able to looking at clothes before I put them on and realizing that they're going to fit me now. Yeah. Uh, mine was I, I, I teach school, and so there was a video that you had to be videotaped occasionally. So I went back and I watched one of the videos of myself in a classroom. And then I had another video, and then I watched myself. There is absolutely no comparison of, of myself then. I was like, oh my, I don't even recognize myself there. Uh, so that was, that was an aha, and that was like, and I will be honest with you, I said, good job, Julie. So mm -hmm. I think you have to I praise you. yourself. Oh, yeah. That, oh, to yeah. me, that's one of the most important things is praise yourself. Mm -hmm. You're doing it, okay? Pra praise, praise, praise. Woo! Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. I don't know that I had one single uh, moment, but the most enjoyable thing for me was the comments you get from people that you see. You never get tired of that, and I seldom, if ever, walk past a mirror without looking at myself. I think I <laughs> look good. Showing the gun. When I was in phase one, someone said um, that once you lose the weight, they won't remember you big, and that actually happened to me a few weeks ago. Um, I decided, I saw a picture of myself at my highest weight, and um, I was mentioning to someone in the office, they're like, whoa, I can't believe that was you eight months ago, because you just look like this. And, I, and so that felt really good, because you don't have to live that existence, and, and people do forget. Mm -hmm. And it's wild, but they do. So this is who you are now. Mm -hmm. And I loved that, that I wasn't, that they didn't see that forever. Mm -hmm. Well, I think I probably have a positive and maybe a negative aha moment, but um, the positive, of course, was um, I didn't tell anybody other than my coworkers and the people I see every single day that I was even doing a program because I thought, you know, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going down this rabbit hole, and then in a month, I'm going to look exactly the same. I'm not going to have lost. And it's another time, well, that one failed too, Sharon. What are you going to try next? You know. So I kept it to myself that I was doing it. And I actually didn't see my sister until I had lost 50 pounds. And she didn't know I was doing the program. And I remember walking in, and she looked at me, and she burst into tears. And she said, that's the Sharon I remember. And um, so I think that's when I really noticed that Maybe I look different because I'm not like these folks. When I look in the mirror, I don't, I see my previous self. I still don't see myself right now. I just don't. But I think the I, negative aha, uh -huh, but even at the same time, a little thought provoking was I was eating in the cafeteria the other day and I always eat healthy. I have a salad and I, I had some grilled chicken on top of it and I had some blueberries and somebody said, that's too healthy. And I said, yeah, it is pretty healthy, but it's good. And she said, yeah, you're one of those people that don't have to worry about it, that you eat healthy anyway. And you, you people drive me crazy. Oh. <laughs> I thought, I can't punch her out because that's workplace violence. <laughs> and I remember I just kind of looked at her and I said, you have no idea where I've come from, but thank you for the compliment. <laughs> yeah. 
I, I think I'm going to talk about a, a program specific aha moment that I had. Uh, thankfully, it was pretty early on in phase one, but you draw so much from your classmates, so much information, so much recipes, just good advice. So one of my classmates was sitting there and, and she said, you know, we, we live in this food driven culture where we celebrate everything with food. And a lot of times it's not that healthy for us, the foods that we have. You know, we just passed one holiday, we have other holidays coming up. So one of the revelations, um, some of you know, some of you don't know, but I, I love to cook. I love to grill. I've got the grill going all summer. And, and that was one thing I thought that I was going to lose a little bit in this program, is being the joy that I had for cooking for other people. But what she said was, you have to remember that events and holidays are not about the food. What? You know, that's that had been my main focus. I wasn't food addicted, but I was food obsessed. And HMR has, the structure of phase one has allowed me to break that cycle. And then phase two is the educational part to really help get you back into eating in a healthy rhythm. Um, off the product. That's what sold me on this pro this program in the beginning was they had a phase one and a phase two. Because I was like, well, they just want to sell you their food forever. That's not true. They also want to educate you on how to live on your own without the food. You know, what kind of program wants to cut their own throat by getting you off their product? You know, not many. <laughs> Nutrisystem doesn't do it. Other programs don't do it. HMR does. But that hit me like a ton of bricks. So that was pretty much my aha moment early on was Events are not about the food. It's about spending time with friends and family and the holiday itself, so. All right, next question. Um, what was your biggest challenge or hurdle and how did you overcome it? My biggest challenge was um, really getting past some of those addictive foods and um, if I'm sure that everybody has them here in this room, but when I, I would say maybe a month in, I started having dreams about my <laughs> most addictive foods, eating my most addictive foods. And that was a, a, a huge aha moment for me that this program was really working to get me detoxed from those foods and I was having withdrawal dreams for real. And so that that to me was was a um, key point of knowing, whoa, this is serious and this is really working. Well, my biggest struggle, and it is still a struggle, so um, God didn't finish with me yet because I still struggle with it, but I did have a number in my head that I thought I wanted to weigh. And my body is not gonna do it. It is, it is not going to do it. I could get there, but could I sustain it for a month? I couldn't sustain it for probably a week. So my biggest thing was to get the number on the scale out of my head and um, know that what I'm doing and what I'm eating and how I'm exercising and I'm living healthy, and that's a number. So that was hard for me, and it still is, because I still have that elusive number that I still try to reach for, and um, to me, that's what is so important about phase two, is that it's all about, are you, are you eating healthy and, and learning a new lifestyle so that you don't look at necessarily a number. I mean, it doesn't give you the right to say, well, I'm not gonna worry about that number, so I'm gonna gain 10 pounds. I'm just saying, if you get a set number in your head, it can drive you nuts, and it did, and it drove my health educator nut and nuts, and it drives my trainer nuts to this day. But I am finally getting that kind of out of my head because people will look at me and say, okay, what are you gonna change to get there? And I don't have an answer because I don't eat outside my box 99.9% .9 of the time. And it's working and I'm maintaining, and I'm maintaining a healthy number that my body likes not what some scale or some BMI measurement mm -hmm. chart told me I should weigh. Oh, amen to that. <laughs> I would say the biggest challenge both then and now is the anticipation of what's coming up. And so our society likes to eat out for every occasion. So eating out continues to be a challenge traveling continues to be a challenge. And so I always have to think about what am I gonna eat and what am I gonna take with me and so forth. 
you know, have 11 o'clock tea time. The guys are going to get a sandwich in the shop on the turn. Okay, I'm going to take mine with me. I'm going to take fruit with me. So you're always having to anticipate and prepare for where you're going to eat. I'm always thinking about what I'm going to eat in Nashville here about four hours from now. I'm trying to figure it out because I don't have control over where we're going. And I'm hoping it's someplace that I won't have to be challenged too much. Probably my biggest challenge is I enjoy cooking. I no longer cook with butter. So that was my biggest thing is to learn how to cook things. You, did, you don't have to load everything with butter. You use a copper pan, you spray it, and then it tastes just the same or maybe even better. So that was the biggest thing because I do enjoy cooking and it's a lifestyle now that I have. So it just comes natural now. It's no longer a diet, it's my lifestyle. I would say that my biggest uh, hurdle was just to give you some insight. I'm, I'm from the South End. So uh, my get-togethers didn't involve food. They in cold beer. So that was anybody that's ever taken a class with me knows cold beer is my hang-up. But uh, you know that that was the one thing I had to give up. But you know, looking back, it's all worth it. You know, do what you have to do. It's for you. This isn't for anybody else but you. You're the one sitting here today. That's a big step. Good for you all. I'd say uh, initially one of the biggest hurdles that I had to overcome was learning to parent myself. Learning to tell myself no and it was okay. You know, I would tell my daughter, no, this is not good for you, or no, don't do that. But I wasn't telling myself that. So inside the structure of this program, you know, it doesn't give you a whole lot of wiggle room to, to add in things or do things like we were talking about. But learning to parent yourself but also learning to reward yourself with non-food related rewards is super important. You know, being able to look in the mirror at night before you go to bed and say, you did a good job today. I'm proud of you. And say that to yourself. You know, it's not in our normal psyche as humans to do that. But if you, if you do that on a repeated basis, you know, you start to believe it. And, you know, people talk about expense, they talk about this, and, and I look at it as an, it's an investment in me. You know, if I'm not here for my family, what does that do for them? It doesn't do anything for them. Well, the road I was headed down was not a good road, so, um, you know, this it's an investment, and, and I had to decide that I was worth it, so. Well, well thank you very much. Those are awesome, amazing answers. Um, here's one. Uh, I'm sure lots of people in the, in the crowd here are anxious to hear. Have you ever gotten off track, and what did you find was the best way to get back on track quickly? <laughs> <laughs> the very next bite you put in your mouth is what you're supposed to have, and you don't go down the slippery slope of, well, I ate, you know, some crackers at lunch, so I might as well go ahead and have pizza. For supper and now since I've had pizza for supper I might as well go ahead and have some Reese's peanut butter cups and now that I've had that maybe some popcorn would be good and let's put some butter on it since I already had Reese's cups so I, I say all the time and I didn't cheat for almost two and a half years and when I say that I mean nothing I mean I ate exactly what I was supposed to have and the first time I did I really thought I'm probably I bet I'm gonna just feel horrible when I put my head to, to the pillow at night as Shane said and I really didn't because the very next morning I got up and I just started right back where I was before. So just don't let it be a slippery slope right on down and, you know, plunging with like a skydive with no parachute. <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> well, and also know what foods that you need to stay away from. I think that I think that you learn that once you're on the program because a lot of times you don't know until you're in it and then, then it kind of comes, bubbles up. So you try to stay away from those particular ones. What was the question? <laughs> Have you ever gotten off oh, yeah. track? Okay. What did you find? Go ahead. Well, I stay on track most of the time, but sometimes on vacations I get off track. And so what I do and what I've done for about four years is I write my weight and my labs work on a sheet of paper that's on the door behind the cupboard. And so I can look and see what my weight was last year this time, uh, two years ago, three years ago. And so I, I, I pay attention to that. 
And when it starts creeping up, I will see Chuck and I'll say, Chuck, when's the next blitz class? And so and he'll keep me informed. And so the, the very next time they have a blitz class, I get right back in the program, trim off six or seven, eight, maybe sometimes 10 pounds, and I'm good, good to go. And so that's right. I guess one of the things that I notice, if I do get off track, and I do, everyone, I, I think if you're honest with yourself, everyone gets off track at, at times. But the biggest thing I can always remember is Joya saying, still come to class. Coming to class is the biggest thing. Everybody messes up. They don't shame you when you get to the scale if you've gained a pound, two pounds. And to me, I don't know, that's never happened in any other diet. You was almost afraid to go way in because you thought, oh, they're going to shame me. I have never felt that in this class, in HMR at ever. So I think that's what's huge, just knowing I messed up, but I'm gonna get right back on track because someone is there to support me. Well, my answer to that would be no. <laughs> <laughs> Once you made your mind up, you made your mind up and that was it. And very good, all right. Uh, next question is... Shane didn't have an oh, opportunity. Oh, there you go, Shane. Well, I kind of resonate with what Dave said, and I know my box is, is not very adventurous. Um, however, in phase two, you do do a little exploring, and, you know, it's... You learn portion control, and you learn what you can have and what you can't have, so... Um, if you do get off track, the safety net of the parachute with HMR is phase one. I mean, you can jump right back in phase one any point in time, do a week, do a month, do six months, whatever you feel you need to do, you can do. You can adjust the program to meet your needs between phase one and phase two. So, I mean, that's been one of the, the, the awesome things is if, if you do have a bad week, two weeks, uh, we went on a cruise back in October. They had plenty of options on the cruise to eat. It was great being in phase two. But when I got back, I went back into phase one for a couple of days just to get a reset, get you know my mind straight, and then move forward. So, uh, Sharon wants to answer. <laughs> I'm happy too. <laughs> I say write it down too. You're going to be taught right off the bat that you need to journal what you eat, and then you write down what you eat. And if you write... You know, if you have something that you're not supposed to have, write it down. I mean, I've been known to write in my little, I have the same red book that's taped shut. I won't even get a new one because I'm afraid it'll jinx me. But when I have a bad day, I write every single thing down. And then at the very bottom, I write crap with exclamation points across it. Because it just draws it to your attention that, hey, I had a bad day. But then you look at all the journaling up before that and after that. You're not a bad person. Look at all the good you did. You had a bad day. Confess and move on. <laughs> very, very good. Um, now here's a question. It says, now you're out of the box. Uh, I think they mean, now that you're in, out of the phase one box, you're in phase two. Do you have favorite go-to foods for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? So in phase two, what are your go-to foods for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? You're talking about your cruise, so what do you do on your cruise? Well, phase two does allow for eggs, so that's a pretty good one. Um, there's turkey sausage that you can have, uh, but phase two, uh, even in phase two, I, I like the meals, the HMR meals, so I'll have one of those for lunch typically through the week at work, um, but the lean proteins, I mean, you've got chicken, you've got turkey, you've got the different fishes to choose from, so that was good being somewhat of an omnivore to get back to having meat, um, I, I do like that, but um, Throughout the week, one of my go-tos is probably the um, ground chicken. It's very versatile. You can cook it. I cook two or three days worth at one time, and then just add vegetables to it, and it's perfect. You know, it stores well, so that's one of my go-tos. But breakfast, if it's a phase two breakfast, you know, an omelet maybe with some fat-free yogurt or something like that with it. So, I'm like clockwork. Um, I have two scrambled eggs. Fix my way in a baggie boiled bag and have you ever had an omelet in the bag it's really good and you don't have to use any butter but you can throw all your veggies and stuff in there with it boil it two pieces of ezekiel bread which is one whole grain which is okay on phase two lunch is generally a salad with grilled chicken 
on top of it and dinner I'm a, I'm a seafood junkie I always have been so I eat a lot of fish and I usually choose between grilled cod or boiled shrimp or so, shrimp under the broiler with a little garlic in there with it it's really good and um, a little salmon and I love um, Greek yogurt with blueberries <laughs> dessert <laughs> Well, for me, um, I really like to do um, pulled chicken. So just, you know, and do little sautés with them. Um, prior to HMR, um, I would do, like I say, a teriyaki chicken, and I would like pour on the sauce and caramelize it and just bake it down all the way. And so it wasn't a healthy version anymore. And through phase two and, and, and that process learned, okay, these are the, these are the condiments. This is the, this is the, calories and the sodium I should be looking for at a specific amount and then using that as more of a, a dipping sauce or, or kind of a slight glazing instead of what I was doing before. So I'm still now able to have some of those favorite foods but I have them differently and they taste and because I have detox from whatever I was expecting that to be you know eight eight nine months ago um, it tastes great. So it's just a little bit different, but it's kind of the same. So I like that. It's amazing how good vegetables taste without cheese or stuff all over them. You can finally taste it to see what it tastes like. Yeah. Well, I still drink the shakes most of the mornings, but when I don't, I have oatmeal. And uh, Chuck turned us on to salmon in one of those classes. So I've developed a tremendous taste for salmon. My wife gets it over at uh, one of the wholesale places and cooks enough for a week. We let it cool off, put it in containers as Chuck has suggested, and I just love it. I eat it every day for that week uh, or close to it. But um, one little uh, confession here is that I love to bike and part of my exercise program. And if I'm gonna do a 40 mile bike ride, my oatmeal, I will find one tablespoon of peanut butter, which is the only time I will eat peanut butter. But Oatmeal is usually my morning uh, routine. I'll have yogurt throughout the day. Almost every day I have a Greek yogurt. I like the protein in that. Uh, apples is my go-to. I, I don't know how many apples I eat. Only, I, sometimes I've eaten four apples a day. Uh, but that's okay because, because that is, that's one of my favorite things. But I never realized how many spices is out there that you can use on chicken. I didn't know you could fix chicken that many ways. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm not. I don't like fish, so I'm learning how turkey and other things like that. But uh, spices and seasoning is gives your chicken a whole different flavor every time you fix it. Well, being being new to uh, to phase two, I really don't venture out of the box. I, I haven't really tried anything but chicken. Uh, but as far as my weekly plan goes, I make a four gallon vat of vegetable soup every week put it in the refrigerator for two days because it's no good until it's set in the refrigerator for two days. Uh, you know, in a 1960s Tupperware bowl, you know, you can't find them anymore. But uh, I put a cup in there and when I get home from work or I need a snack or anything, I get me a cup of that. And, and it's so neutral that you can take any one of the entrees and put in there and that's your meal. Because it's very neutral. And it's, it's just like anything else. It's like everything we do is all about vegetables and fruits. You know, so that's what I do. So if I'm having one of those days and I need more, for 30 calories, I can have all I want. Trust me, it'll fill you up. It'll make you feel a lot better. You know, you come in from the cold, you want a hot meal. There's nothing like popping that in the microwave real quick. And, you know, it's a satisfying, you know, uh, feel-good food, if you will, you know, for me. Well, I'm kind of tormenting questions here, but I'm thinking, um, how has your social life changed as a result? Has your social life changed? Not for you yet? No? Yeah. Anybody down here? Okay. My couch misses me. <laughs> I say all the time, that aside from, I may have lost 70 pounds, but I gained friends that I didn't even know existed because, and some of them are right here in this room and they know what they mean to me, but we have a group now that we exercise here together. And we started out just meeting here to exercise. And now Wednesday night we went to the ballet together and 
a couple weekends ago, we went to Churchill Downs and my social life has changed because I feel great and I feel like I want to be more active. I don't want to come home and turn on the TV and sit down on my couch. Even when I have a free day and I think, oh, I don't have to go anywhere today and it's my rest day from the gym, I go home and I sit down and I'm probably bored within 10 or 15 minutes and I'm outside with the dog taking a walk or something. I just can't sit like I used to sit and my circle of friends have grown tremendously and their soul and their spirit is the same as mine and it's just such a godsend. Well, I'm kind of in um, young family land, so my social life is going to be different than some in different stages. Um, but what I realized as part of what I was doing socially was, um, you know, my husband would be like, you know, you, you kind of sit down a lot when you're playing with our young son and I just, I wonder why you don't like get up and go a little bit more. And I'm like, oh. I'd be like, God, stop saying that. You, you have like this, like overactive body. And I see it in your mom too. And like, you guys are just genetically like more active. And once I had dropped like the first 25 pounds, I realized that I was going around more, doing a little bit more in, in the room when I was playing with them, up a little bit more. And I thought, whoa, that wasn't his genetic disposition. That was me having extra weight on myself. And that was like mind blowing at that point. So it was, um, so that's just how my social life changed. It was really awesome. Julie? Well, kind of resonating what uh, Sharon was talking about. Uh, a few years ago, we took a trip up to Columbus, Ohio, and went to the zoo with some friends and family. And uh, I found that every 30, 35 minutes or so, I had to sit down. Um, and I was kind of keeping the group back, you know, from seeing the entire zoo. And it got to be a point later in the day where it was, you know, I'm going to sit here, you guys go on, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, don't have to do that anymore. Um, there are so many benefits to this program that it's just too many to list. Like I said, in the beginning, we could talk about it for hours and hours and hours. But being able to keep up with people and my daughter and the kids at the school and different things like that, being asked to volunteer for things where you may not have been. Um, one example, okay, we went to a comedy show and um, my wife and I are sitting up towards the front and out of the crowd, the comedian picks me to come up on stage and he's going to do something behind me and it looks like his hands are my hands. Okay, well, 352 pounds, he wouldn't have been able to get around me. So, you know, it was, it was fun. So I got to have more fun at that show at a smaller size. So it's just one of those things. I mean, you know, you get asked to play golf more often. Uh, just and what you are doing is easier on you and for you it's better for you to get out and move so that's my thing mine may be a little bit different i teach school so sometimes we have a stressful week and we'd have an outing well my role has changed i'm now the designated driver not the designated drinker <laughs> I guess socially, the only thing that's really changed for me is, uh, for an example, two years ago when the Eagles came in concert, me and my wife went, and I couldn't sit in the seats. I had to walk around in the handicap zone away from the police all night long because I couldn't fit in the chair. I've since then went to four more concerts and I fit just fine. <laughs> And this is kind of a corollary. It's like, how has your quality of life changed? You kind of answered some of that a little bit, touched upon it. So how's your quality of life changed? Uh, that, man, that's, that's a big question. That could take two or three hours to answer it. But it's, I can make it simple by just saying, I enjoy being me again for the first time in a long time. Wow. <laughs> I was walking down the hall uh, and a teacher said, you look really happy. And I said, I am happy. I was twirling the keys on my finger and she said, and I said, you know, I feel happy. You know, you just feel, you feel proud of yourself. And so I think that makes you carry yourself a little bit different. 
Well, certainly losing the weight makes you feel good. And, and what I enjoy is uh, as many of the groups I hang out with, whether it's playing golf or exercise, I'm the old guy. And so I love being the old guy, and I love competing with these young kids. <laughs> I can do it, too. <laughs> he carries us in the gym. The quality of life I've um, experienced as a change has been um, the total elimination of negative self-talk in my head. It is just night and day. Um, so through this process, I don't have these internal conversations with myself that I was having before, um, either subtly or, you know, just battling myself. So um, that has been a mental, amazing part of this process. Tissues, Sharon? Yeah. <laughs> um, I've always been happy. And happy is one thing and joyful is another. And I'm joy filled at this stage of my life. And I feel better than I felt when I got out of high school. And I mean that sincerely because I've always been a little overweight. And um, then I got really, really overweight. So I used to go to bed at night and when I'd say my prayers, I would say, please help me to get this addiction under control. And now it feels so great spiritually to lay my head to the pillow at night and say, thank you, God, for giving me another healthy day. And um, we were asked in HMR within about the first, I think, 13 weeks, the first part of phase one, they went around the room and they said, what do you want out of this program? And, you know, everybody said, well, of course, we wanted to lose weight. And um, I'm off all my meds. I still have to take a little tiny bit of Lipitor because thank you, Mother, she gave me hydrocholesterolemia, but she gave me a lot of good things too. But um, I remember saying, and this has been almost five years ago, I want to have a healthy retirement. And that sounded so far away. Well, guess what? I'm retiring January 31st, and I won. I get to do it, and God willing, I'll have a healthy, happy retirement. So read the question one more time. How has your quality of life changed? Quality of life. That's that's a big subject like Dave said. I would say people of size have issues on a daily basis that people that haven't been there don't understand. Um, how many times have you gone out to eat and they say booth or a table? And you have to say table because you can't sit in the booth. You get on an airplane and they bring you automatically assuming that you need an extender for your seatbelt. Or you're sitting so close to the person next to you that you're making their airplane ride uncomfortable. <laughs> so I think putting those things behind me were probably, you know, other than just the general health and the feelings and the but I like myself again, you know, and I am proud of myself for doing this. Uh, my family is proud of me for doing this. They've been cheerleaders from day one. But not having to deal with some of those person of size issues uh, that we all struggle with on a daily basis has probably been being able to just lay those down and, and not have to worry about them. You know, booth or table, you know, it, it's a simple question, but you don't have to deal with it anymore. You know, you don't have to wait that extra 10 minutes for a table. You can sit anywhere you want. Would anyone like to come up and ask a question? Can okay. we ask it from there? You can ask it from there. Okay, Dave. Well, I just like to make a comment, and that is that one thing that's been implied which I really appreciate is the staff. Program and success in a positive manner. Because I wonder if you get personality types to keep you fast by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> You're also optimistic, so I would oh. like to give a hand to the staff. Well, we'll thank you. <laughs> no, we, but um, but we want to make sure that everyone's going to be a, a really good fit for for all of you as well. So yes, okay. Joy. Oh. Oh, oh. oh no, I don't. Oh. Um, I would be interested in knowing what each of you all like to do for exercise because, you know, is it something that you were doing before 
you know, losing your weight or is it something that you've picked up? Um, are there certain activities that you've found that you kind of love doing now and you wouldn't give up for the world? I would love to hear about that. <clears throat> this may surprise a few people in the room and it might hear a groan or two. I haven't done a workout since I started this. Really? <laughs> I've lost 161 pounds just doing the diet, change of food. Now, I've increased my activity, okay? Um, last December, I started walking for the third, first 30 minutes of my lunch hour, and, and I haven't missed, other than weather, I haven't missed any days uh, doing that. So a mile, mile and a half a day walking. Couldn't do it before. But, you know, some people may not want to hear that, but. I wanted this program to prove itself to me. That's how arrogant I was when I walked in the door. Okay? It did it. So now I gotta put up or shut up. And I gotta keep going with it. So I don't really have a daily exercise workout routine. I, I'm to the point now where I've lost probably as much weight as I can without toning and moving on that way. So it's time to tone up a little bit and just be a little healthier, a little stronger that way. But the plan worked. The weight's gone. So now it's time for me to put up or shut up. I love everything. I do. Um, I, Joy calls me a gym rat, and I am. Um, I joined Milestone when um, I joined the HMR program, and I work with the same trainer now that I worked with when I started. And... Um, but my claim to fame and is that I started lifting, I wanted to, I decided two years ago I wanted to try to lift some heavy weight because we were doing cardio and we were doing routine rates and stuff. So that's mainly what I do on Sunday mornings now um, when I work with Brandon. And my claim to fame is I deadlifted 165 pounds. <laughs> God, not very much. <laughs> if any so um but i will count yard work because i do all of it and i do live on a hill so <laughs> it's kind of strenuous um but i have noticed over the course of being here and losing the weight that the yard work does not hurt me like it hurt me before so knees things like that were real and now i'm i'm faster at it um so <laughs> Yeah, so I have to be honest um, and say that no, but that bike in my room is looking better and better every day. <laughs> well, during phase one, and you're keeping your numbers, you're, you're supposed to exercise 300 calories of PA every day. And during phase one, I did not enjoy that particularly. I would walk and do a few things, but I always make sure I got my number in because I'm, I'm very competitive and kind of a high achiever, so I always got the numbers done, but I didn't always enjoy it. But over, the, over a 16-year period, my exercise mind has changed dramatically. I joined the gym right after uh, going through the program, uh, and I guess it was about four years ago, maybe five years ago, they started the Don't Sit, Get Fit. And I'd always wanted to use a trainer, but I always been a little bit um, timid. wasn't sure I wanted to do that, so I, I joined with some of the other folks in the HMR program and became addicted to it. And in 2016, me and my uh, granddaughter ran a mini marathon, and so that was uh, that was kind of a, a crowning achievement. But today, a, a typical week for me now is I work out with Christine one night. Eugene one night, and then I come over here about three times a week to the gym. Okay. <laughs> What's that? Oh, yeah. And so, uh, actually, I did a five-minute plank not too long ago. If anyone knows what, I, what a five-minute plank is. But, uh, exercise is, uh, is a joy to me. And I will say about the, about the trainers, I mean, you know, Monday night, I've got a Monday attitude. I still work at my age, and I, I do not want to come to the gym. I hate coming over here on Monday night, but I love walking to the parking lot after we get finished. And so <laughs> it, it's, just, uh, it's just a real pleasure, and I, I enjoy exercise, and I do it regularly. Same with me. I consider exercise my mental health outlet. It's just one of the things I enjoy doing. I don't know if they have body pump here at this gym, but I do body pump twice a week, and I do Tabata twice a week. And then I walk at least six miles one day during that week. So I usually get five miles 
But uh, I'm in the wild notice, you know, it's on there. Somebody said they had skin removal surgery. I was the one that had skin re removal surgery. I, I was exercising, and I don't know if you know Tabata, you're jumping constantly. Well, I had lost weight, so when I was jumping, I had other stuff jumping with me. Uh, so I decided that I wanted to get rid of that. When I had surgery back in uh, July, they removed 14 pounds of skin. So imagine losing 14 pounds of skin and exercising, what that's going to happen to you. Um, it's not a vein. I'm not being vain. It was uh, necessary. Uh, I do have another one scheduled. Uh, December 11th, I'm going to get the skin removed from my thighs and my arms. That may be a little bit vain, but that's okay. <laughs> That's tough to follow. <laughs> well, uh, just a little history. Three years ago, I had knee surgery, and I used to have to have two injections every three months. I don't do that anymore. I rehabbed on an Aerodyne bike, and I hated it so much, I went and bought one. <laughs> so I Aerodyne every day of my life, 30 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes at night. Every go I, re every go I reach, my reward is 30 more minutes on that bike. I know it sounds ridiculous, but that's how I reward myself. I've earned it, and it keeps those goals coming. And now that I've lost a bunch of weight, I'm, I'm a working machine compared to what I was. I mean, I can, I can work all day long, and I don't even think about it. I used to sit and think, oh, my God, dude, I've got five more hours. No, now I'm like, I'm, when the day is over, the day is over. You know, I've got, I can go home, and I can work in the yard. I don't have to go home and lay down on a couch for an hour. To, to mow the front lawn. I could just, I don't, you don't even think about it anymore. You know, your body wants to be in motion. You put it in the, in the position it can and it will. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, Crystal, come on up. I, I'm gonna cheat. I have two questions. Uh, I uh, have two questions and they're the questions that I always get, but uh, one is, do you have extra skin? <laughs> Yes. yes. The second is, what is the one thing you take away from this journey? If you had to, to drill it into one thing, what's the one thing you take away? <laughs> Self-respect. being proud of myself. That is a hard question to, to answer, but I, I feel like I'm a different person than what I would have been otherwise. I am a healthy, good-looking man. <laughs> and uh, I feel good. Um, that it was not my fate. Gaining weight was not my fate. In answer to your first question, yes, I have extra skin. <laughs> and yes, I'm very self-conscious of it. <laughs> but I'm too chicken to have anything done with it yet. So, but um, pure, unadulterated joy. It's probably one of the hardest questions I've been asked so far. But um, aside from all the culmination of answers that have been given, I was worth it. Yeah, it wasn't easy, especially in the beginning, changing. You know, your whole habit and your whole lifestyle basically changes a little bit. Um, but I was worth it. I'm glad that that larger version of me took the first step. Um, and I thank him for that. I'll try not to cry. <laughs> Those are awesome. Yes? Ken did not say how much he lost. Oh, Ken, how much have you lost? I lost 60 pounds. Wow. 60 pounds. How old are you, Ken? I'm 74. 74, wow. Very good. <coughs> Other questions? I have one. Yes. Um, when you went from phase one to phase two, were you at your goal weight? Or did you continue to lose and reach your goal weight actually in phase two? 
Well, we'll pass it around. Well, actually, I was in phase one for a long time, and so I had actually been the same weight. So I basically was at the weight I expected to be at before I went into phase two. I lost them both. I think mine is almost even. I lost 50 in phase one and 50 in phase two. Uh, a lot of people said, oh, uh, when you go to phase two, watch out. No, I wasn't at my goal weight, so it was a gradual, you add things in, and I continued losing weight. And I was like, oh wow, I'm still losing weight and I'm still eating. And as the other diets, they end, and all of a sudden, one week I'm up a pound, next week I'm up another pound, because you, you didn't learn how to change your whole life. You, you met their diet. You, now it is a lifestyle for you. You know, I've just recently moved into into two or kind of two, but I lost everything in phase one because if you've ever seen someone that weighs 400 pounds at a buffet, I'm not trustworthy. <laughs> I, I don't. I didn't trust me to move into phase two and make quality decisions. I didn't think I was educated enough. I still don't think I'm educated enough. I've got a lot to learn about maintenance, but the only thing I'm good at right now is I can lose weight. I can stay in the box. I can do what I'm told. That's easy. Phase two scares the hell out of me, you know, because it's a lot of lot of decisions I have to make on my own that I don't feel like I'm ready for. So I wanted to stay there and lose as much as I possibly can. So I didn't have as much weight to lose as some. Um, so phase one worked until until I needed to actually go into phase two to lose the rest of it. Um, so that um, it was where I kind of leveled off there for a few weeks and I was like okay and Lydia said okay it's time to transition and I lost an additional 10 15 pounds in phase two so yeah. Yeah. I transitioned very slowly because I'm kind of like Dave said you it's scary because you know what, what is working with phase one and then all of a sudden you're going back to those foods that could be trigger foods but I lost 30 in phase one and I lost 40 in phase two. Um, but I'm gonna preach it just for a second if you'll indulge me, the importance of phase two. It is so easy when you're in phase one, it's very motivating because you see the weight coming off and it comes off very quickly and that scale is going down, down, down. You think, yay, yay, yay. And then you lose your weight and you think, I've got this. Trust me, you don't have it. Um, you need to learn a whole lifestyle and it's not a diet. And phase two, when you do start to put some things back in, it can be really frightening because the scale will be like a roller coaster. You may have had a perfectly good week and the scale's up two pounds. And if you're home by yourself and you see that, you think, oh, well, what the heck? I can't do this for the rest of my life, so I'm just gonna go back to my old habits. I'm just destined to be overweight. When you come in here, and you weigh in your up a couple pounds, nobody's gonna say, oh my God, you know, what you do wrong? They're gonna say, well, what happened? They're gonna look at your food journal. They're gonna tell you, well, maybe let's do this or stay the course. It may just be your body reacting to the whole grain for the first time that you haven't had and however long it's been. The guidance for phase two is so needed. And um, I've never missed a meeting. I still come and when I'm out of town, I bank and People will say, well, how long are you gonna do this? And I'm like, well, you know, I was overweight for probably 30 years, so I've been here for four, so I've got a big percentage of time yet to go. <laughs> I stayed in phase one for about 15 weeks. Um, I hit 75 pounds in that 15 weeks. Um, and it was decided with my health educator at the time to go ahead and transition. It wasn't that it wasn't working, it was that it was time to start the education. So the phase two portion really started my education. Uh, that's when it stopped being a diet and started becoming more of a lifestyle. So and that's what I had to adopt was this was going to be moving forward, how I ate, how I do things. This is just me, this is the way I do it now. I mean, it, the way everybody should do it more uh, naturally, but uh, that's what I wanted to do was I wanted to at least hit 75 pounds in phase one and then move over to phase two, so. Appropriate phase two education leads to maintenance for the rest of your life. All right, any uh, other questions? Yes. 
Yes, eat when you're hungry. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? More is better. Can we elaborate on more is better? Who wants to go first? Okay, Ken. Well, more, as it's been said earlier, what, what, what they're talking about is eating what is in your box. So, you know, you're supposed to eat at least, when you're in the program, you're supposed to eat at least two of the entrees per day. But if you're hungry at the end of the day, nobody's going to yell at you. Eat another one. Or you eat an apple, like she said, eat another apple. Or eat another apple, or take four or five shakes, whatever it takes. So, if you're eating the the, uh, the foods that are in the box during phase one, you eat and you eat more if you're hungry. So you never should never go hungry. It is a shock that they tell you to eat more, but you still lose weight. But the thing it is, you're eating the correct foods. You're not eating the extra candy bars. You're eating the extra carrots. You're eating the extra apples. So that's where that's coming in when they're saying eat more. Uh, and I'm the one, if I, if I want something, I'll eat the apple right there. And, and then that's fine. You know, if I eat four apples a day, I'm okay because apples are okay for you. Well, that pretty much says it all. But uh, the thing of it is, I think it was you asked the question right there. You have the food in your box. That's your box. That's your food. Okay, if the wheels are coming off and you're having that day where you just, oh my God, I can't stop running to the kitchen, make sure you eat as much as you want that's in your box. It's all yours. Don't do it every day, you know, but do it when you have, you know, break in case of an emergency. If you need a third entree, have a third entree, you know. I, uh, I eat, sometimes I eat four entrees a day, you know. I, I eat a lot of food. My, my vegetables are, you know, 72 a week. You know, I, I, I'm at the max foods you could possibly take. I'm, I'm surprised I'm not eating right now. <laughs> I'd like to make an observation also as a person who's been around here for a long time. Chuck is eating all the time. <laughs> Every time you see Chuck, he's eating. And he's done a great job keeping his off. I, I agree with that. <laughs> Um, I, I tend to eat um, throughout the day as well, um, but yes, it was, you know, sometimes I would go down the rabbit hole of having way too many grapes, but um, yeah, I think it's really, really important, especially when, you're, when your body's starting to level off because you are used to eating a large quantity of food, and so um, your body does eventually taper off and you don't have to have that large quantity of food, but while you do need that, um, the fruits and vegetables are your super friend, especially steamed carrots. They're, <laughs> they're so sweet, you know? It's great. Um, <laughs> you mentioned steamed carrots. I work in healthcare, and I ended up with a bilirubin test because my hands looked yellow, and I told my doctor it was the carrots, and it was. It was, and, but I ended up with the bilirubin, and I said, well, we better check that liver. And I said, it's because I'm eating a bag of carrots, probably, but, and they're still yellow on, the, on my hands. But um, my box, and even in, in maintenance now, my box is I eat three to four lean proteins a day, and I eat anywhere from seven to ten fruits and vegetables, but more vegetables than fruits. And um, I usually have a whole grain every day because of the exercise level that I do. But when I'm hungry, I don't go get crackers or cookies. I, number one, I live alone. I'm blessed with that because my, you talk about a healthy environment. You couldn't find anything that a rabbit would need in my house. I mean, it's just not in there. I don't have it, so I don't have to pretend. I did go to my next door neighbor's when she was out of town and steal her popcorn. But I ate what I could and then took it back. I told her I was going to go get it. She said, oh, keep it, honey. I said, oh, no, I'm not doing that. But anyway, carrots, celery, anything that, that you like. And like I said, once you start eating vegetables the right way, instead of in a casserole with cheese and crackers and Cool Whip, or not Cool Whip, um, um, sour cream and cream, cream cheese and all that stuff that you put in casseroles, once you start eating them the right way, they're all so good, except tomatoes. They're beef. <laughs> I second that. Tomatoes are not. No. Okay. All right, so when I started out in phase one, you've got this little box of food. You've got your shakes. And they tell you, this is your food. Add fruits and vegetables to it. Well, there's some guidelines. There's cookbooks. There's different things that you can find. So I started experimenting, and somebody in class, one of the genius people that I went to class with, said, take it out of the container. 
use it as an ingredient. Mm -hmm. What? Okay. So you take the food, you put it in a saucepan or a little wok style thing with a bunch of vegetables. It changes the whole dynamic of your food. It changes the taste of the entree itself. They're, they're very versatile that way. Um, you can add spices to it as long as it's not sodium based. I was in heaven again. So in phase one, my wife would say, that's a lot of food. Are you sure you're doing this right? <laughs> and I said, we'll find out Thursday when I go way in. I go way in, another five pounds gone, another 10 pounds gone. I'd hit another button, you know, a goal weight, or, or a next goal weight. So eat, but eat healthy. So use that <clears throat> entree as an ingredient, get it out of the little box, play with it, do some spices. Um, red cayenne is one, garlic powder is another. You can, you can make something almost as good or better than you would have at a restaurant if you play with it enough. So HMR encourages you to play with your food. <laughs> any, other, any other questions? Yes, Terry. So how do we handle an unsupportive uh, environment? I would say I also I also have an unsupportive environment um, only with the food. I think he's maybe a little bit more supportive than what I'm doing, but I have to just remember that I am me. And although we are together, he's going to do what he's going to do, and I cannot. And so I do not have the privilege of having a completely eliminated house. There are candies. There are candy canes. There are pizzas stacked high in that fridge. But I know the foods that I like, that I've figured out that are my super favorite foods in HMR and my super favorite vegetables and my super favorite grapes. And I will spend on those. You know, and that that's where it's like, I don't care what is in the house. If I have these things and this is my journey and they can do whatever they want, and as long as I am well equipped and well stocked with the things that I know I really like, then I'm good because that's not about me. Great. Well, I would say my wife is more supportive today than she was 16 years ago. <laughs> and uh, I would, we, we basically eat healthy now, but she still eats things that I won't eat. So in our cupboard, I've got my side of it and she's got hers. Uh, you're better off if you, you don't have a uh, problem is to clean up your environment and only have foods that you can and will eat. But if there's other foods there, I keep mine separate. Mainly mine was my workplace environment. So I, I use self-talk a lot. Um, self-talk may be sometimes, you should be on this diet, not me. <laughs> you know, and, and that's kind of bad to look at, but I just use the self-talk all the time. You, you've come too far to let somebody mess it up. Uh, don't, don't let them. That's what they're trying to do to you. They're jealous what you're doing now. You're changing your life and they can't or they don't want to. And that, that was the biggest thing, to self-talk, to say, I, I, I'm worth it. I'm going to do it. I'm, a, I'm worth it. That pretty much says it all. <laughs> Any more questions? Okay. Well, uh, well, thank you all for coming. Uh, we're going to have our drawing. Who, who, who's going to do the drawing? Who wants to? Uh... How about if we have each person draw someone, and I'll give out six gifts? Okay, we can do that. Okay. This is a total surprise to Chuck. What? We're giving people <laughs> away. I, did, I didn't authorize that I expense. Didn't authorize Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I, I got. I got to clear this with Diane first. Wait a minute. Oops. Oops. <laughs> Uh, no, hang on. We'll, we'll do a drawing real quick. Okay. We'll call names out. Thanks, everybody. Again. Yeah, thank you all for coming. Um, Remember, we're doing this again January 19th. 19th.
Yeah. Oh, um, how many people here are brand new and have not done HMR? Okay, so very good. Uh, just an FYI. Well, thank you for coming. Did, did uh, James Michael bring you? He brought you, so very good. Just as an FYI, we're going to have an information session right after this. Uh, it's where you learn more about the program. And you, if you want to join, you can join the program after that. Uh, if anyone wants to do that, we can, we can do that afterwards. But thank you all for coming. I will announce our winners. Name? My new best friend, <laughs> Nina Wolf. Nina? Yeah. Yeah. All right. You're getting a pass to the gym. <laughs> I'm sorry, Nina. She belongs to the gym. I also work here. <laughs> All right. You could trade it in for a benefit bar. Okay. Rip stole it? Rip. Rip. Oh, Rip, uh, Rip just left. Oh, no. I'll Rip, give it to him. Rip just call. left. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, Chris King. Woo! Oh, hey, Chris. Monica Wait, which King. one? Monica. 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 How oh, good is that, Chris? One. Oh, Tara Wright. Yeah, there are two Chris Kings. Tara Wright. Oh, very good. Tara. Tara gets the shake bag. Skinny Dave. Skinny Dave. You doing some stuff Laura Jones. Laura Jones. Yay! I saw Laura in the corner. Very good. Well, thank you all. This concludes our production. See you in January. <laughs>